Common misconception about AMD is that their ray tracing performance is really bad, but in this video I'm going to be showing you and testing my AMD graphics card against ray tracing to prove that it isn't in reality that bad. I will also be showing you the new AMD graphics cards which actually are really good in comparison to Nvidia. If you are looking to buy a 50 series graphics card as well, this might entice you to buy an AMD graphics card instead. Let's look at the benchmarks from the latest 9070 and 9070 XT video by Linus Tech Tips on the ray tracing chapter. So with their benchmarks in 1080p with ray tracing ultra and no FSR or anything, the GPUs perform extremely well. Against the previous top-end graphics card, the 7900XTX, AMD's last top-end graphics card, the 9070, the lower-end new GPU, is neck and neck with it, and actually beating it by 1 FPS. But the 9070XT is almost as good in raster with Ray Tracing Ultra at 1080p against the 4070 Ti Super, so it's almost as good as that. That's impressive especially seen as the 7900 XCX was nowhere near that. And if you even look at it, the 7900 GRE, which is very close in comparison to my 7800 XT, is still almost at 60 FPS with ultra ray tracing, and that's without FSR, so that's really impressive. Now the 6800 XT is getting down there to the almost unplayable mark, but so if you're considering a like a new gen graphics card, these are really great options and they're coming March 6th. I might be posting this later than that, but they should be out by then. And they're only going to cost $600 and $550. So that's really good compared to the 5070 Ti, which isn't even in stock. Now let's check out some gameplay with ray tracing on my graphics card in Spider-Man 2. So we're going to be playing at full screen, it's 1440p, and I have frame gen on. We're going to turn that off. We are going to turn off FSR, and then we're going to leave it at I and we're gonna put on ray tracing. I'm gonna start it at get yeah, high. Now first it has to compile them as you can see at the bottom of the screen. It might take a couple of minutes. I do have an undervolt to 1080 megahertz, so that is one thing to point out. I do have it overclocked just a few megahertz from base, but uh, it shouldn't be too impactful. I mean, the undervolt might impact it a little bit, but not too sure. But here we are, we're looking around. I don't have anything on, I don't have FSR on. I have ray tracing at high my 7800 XT and we're looking at about 50 FPS right here and now I'm gonna go over to that purple thing there's a base there and I want to see what kind of FPS we get in combat oh this is not a okay so this is a prowler code okay so just flying through the city flying over this bridge we're at 40 FPS that's not bad if you lock this at let's say 30 FPS that would be no CPU bottleneck, and that would allow you to have such a smooth experience with ray tracing and everything. This should be a fight. All right, here we go. There we go. Yeah, here comes the FPS drops. All right. Just want to kind of like move around and stuff a lot. I'm not gonna focus on the gameplay, obviously. Try my best, but you know. Trying to look at the FPS and play at the same time, that's not really ideal. I mean, it's seen at like 45 FPS. That's pretty good. I'll be honest, I forgot a lot of the move sets. There we go. Okay. So yeah, we set about 45 FPS. It was pretty stable, relatively, but I mean, yeah, if you turn on dynamic resolution scaling, it should, and lock it to like 50 or 60 FPS with FSR on, it would be pretty good. I don't even think my old GPU could do this, and that was a NVIDIA GPU. I had a 3060 Ti before this. So like the fact that this GPU can pull these out, when I turned on, I played Miles Morales on, a 3060, on my 3060 Ti. And when I turned on ray tracing, it went down to like the 40s, and that was with DLSS. 
No, no, no. Was that with DLSS? I think it was like DLSS quality. I think I also had the eight gigs run out a lot, but still like this is impressive for an AMD GPU for their for them being considered bad at ray tracing. But yeah, I mean, I hope this gives a good enough gauge about how well this is doing. I don't know what else to test because I did some combat, you know, I did some flying around. Could try jumping off of the top of a building. This game seems to be well optimized now to be able to ooh there goes down a little bit so this water over here maybe but we do have deal we have fsr on right now i almost said deal says we have fsr on right now so yeah this looks pretty decent i like this i'm gonna be honest i would put fsr on for this if you want to get close to 60 and stay at 60. if you just want a 60 fps experience it's great if you want 120 you're probably gonna need frame gen or maybe at least performance FSR, but yeah, and maybe medium settings. Now it's super smooth because I turned off ray tracing. <laughs> so now we're in Cyberpunk 2077, and let's check out the settings. So go into graphics, turn that FSR off, turn the FS, you know, texture quality. We're gonna turn on that ray tracing, ray tracing, no path tracing. We could check that out in a second. I've never actually turned that on before. I will probably test it though for this video. Um, and then we have high graphic settings, so pretty much max. Now the benefit of this game is that it has a benchmark. So we can just test it and we don't have to wait a million years for it to load and stuff. I don't really trust this benchmark too much because it's not really that accurate of what the actual gameplay would be. In com it's a really good way to compare to other graphics cards, how well it's doing. So as we can see, we're getting about 25 FPS. This isn't the greatest, but this is native. Oh, now we're going outside. Okay, so less demanding area. We should wait till we get to the city part because that one's pretty hard. You can see that reflection there. That's impressive. That's pretty good. So my GPU is working pretty hard. We're pushing 260 watts, 100% utilization. So we don't seem to have a bottleneck now because we're at max stuff. But um, yeah, this is yeah, this is pretty demanding. It's staying very consistent though. The lows are not too bad. Overall, that wasn't too bad. Average FPS was 27. That's pretty good, honestly. So let's go back to the settings. Let's see FSR, where is it? FSR quality. Yeah, okay, so FSR quality from the benchmark. This is looking a lot better. We're getting almost a 50. So this is about the same performance we were getting in Spider-Man. That's to be expected because it's kind of one of the most demanding titles there is is why it's such a good benchmarker. Yeah, I mean, it ain't no black myth, but still. We're getting almost to 60, that's pretty good. The average was 49 almost, and lowest was 41, so much better. I'm definitely more playable. And yeah, so let me try putting it down to medium, maybe? Let's try that, but then let's try path tracing. Let's see what happens there. This is going to be really demanding. Come on, PC, you got this, you got this, you got this. Here we go, here we go. This is with recording too, so it's going to take like a few frames. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Here comes path tracing. Okay, that's pretty impressive. Honestly, it's, it's very stuttery, let's be honest. Path tracing is the most demanding thing there is in, I'm pretty sure. So obviously, nobody's going to play like this. Let's be honest, no, nobody wants to play with pad tracing. It's literally the most demanding thing there is. It's so many rays, and it's crazy. You can see how beautiful it is, but I mean, nobody's going to play with that, honestly. I mean, 22 FPS, uh, no. So we're going to turn that all the way off. We get that 408 FPS in the loading screen. I mean, that's pretty good, guys. It's pretty good. You should buy AMD because of that. So overall, in Cyberpunk, it doesn't seem to be doing too hot. It doesn't seem to be doing that well. Let's do frame gen off. Well, that wasn't native though. I'm not too impressed in Cyberpunk, but in Spider-Man, I'm pretty impressed. That's a brand new title. It's not even fully optimized still. It still needs some work. And for ray tracing on native, 45 FPS, pretty good. I mean, for a fighting game, where you're moving a lot, where you're flying around a city. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful, I mean, let's be honest, you don't need ray tracing. But if you want to put it on and you want to have a cinematic experience, it's not too bad. So yeah, that's that's what I have on the, a takeaway of this video is that you don't need it. But if you want to have a cinematic experience at like locked 30 FPS, PlayStation 4 kind of vibes, it would be perfect. 
um, but if you want to push like 60, it might not be too great. On a 7900 XTX or a 9070 XT or 9070, it will definitely push those frames a little bit more. The lower end GPUs just don't have as much horsepower as you would believe them to have. Nowhere near like a 4070 performance, but you know, I mean, it's pretty good. For native performance, 25 FPS on Cyberpunk benchmark with ray tracing ultra that's pretty impressive and how static it was it only went up and down between like 25 and 32 fps so overall that's pretty good i i'm <clears throat> i'm not too impressed but i'm not too unimpressed either because my gpu my old gpu couldn't even do that you gotta keep that in mind so if you're upgrading from like a 1060 or something it's gonna be miles better like you're gonna be blown away that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, like and subscribe if you haven't already. That's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.